in the building. What's poppin'? How you doing, bro? I'm good. I see you've been working. New albums out less than two weeks ago. Yeah. And now you just be dropping nonstop. Yeah, you know, just gotta keep working, keep making money. That's a that's a different level of working though. That's like that hustle that's hard to find. Not everybody got that type of ambition. Can you hear me? Nah, everybody don't got everybody don't got that ambition. Everybody definitely ain't got that type of ambition. But what's going on with you? How you feeling about the new album? You don't know, big money's out now. Go check it out, stream it, do what you do. I'm loving it. You loving it? Yeah, for sure. How's the reception been so far? This the biggest I ever been right now. You think so? Yeah, for sure. I just did. I just did um, a show in Houston. It was nine thousand people. I just did Dallas and Fort Worth. Sold out. This this probably the biggest I ever been. You doing numbers right now, bro? Are you yeah. doing a tour right now? Nah, I'm not on the tour. That's crazy. I feel like if you're doing nine thousand, you should be doing a tour lineup real soon. Well, it was me and a few other artists, but uh, it right. was me, B Young Blue, B. Um, but it was a major. It was a majority. Like everybody had fans there, but it was a lot of fans. Like, and then I Dallas mean, this weekend was insane. Yeah, I heard it was. He was out there living your best life. I see. So, with the new album coming out, and I know you be dropping regular tracks all the time. What's your favorite track on the album? I still haven't figured that out. I look at that I look at that album as one big one big song because like I like it from beginning to end. Like I like Cowboy, I like Corrupted, I like mm -hmm. um, Big Money, I like Body Rock. Um mm -hmm. I like this this probably this album right here, I would probably consider like one of my best albums because you could perform it so easy. Like I could go to um Roll It Loud and perform Escape. I could perform Body Rock, Corrupted easily. Mm -hmm. All my Kind of difficult to kind of rap, mm -hmm. but I rap so fast on it. Oh, I feel you on that. And I saw you had a couple of features on there, like Benny the Butcher and G Herbo. Was there anybody you wanted on there that you didn't get? You heard me. Um, I don't. I don't. I honestly, I don't got to do features with nobody. But I like Herbo. Herbo is an artist I like to listen to. Um, Nardo Wick is an artist, like, when I used to work out, uh, just, like, a few months ago, I was listening to his album, then I listened to a lot of her, a lot of Future, you know, I would have took Future on there, you know, Future the GOAT, um, right. who else, um, Drake, of course, because Drake, you know, said he did, but a... I don't gotta have no features, if I'm, if I don't have no features, I'm cool, too. Are you really? Yeah, super cool, that, this, my first time really having big features other than Baby and Moneybag, but um, let's be clear, they definitely helped the songs, but the songs were going, like 24 was on its way to going gold before yeah. Baby Baby made it triple platinum, but it was yeah. going to go away. And then LLC was a smash before Bag got on it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we put features on the songs after we know they smashes just to, for Smash. business. But I right. rock with Dude, they cool, you know what I'm saying? But if I don't have a feature, I could care less, too. Have you ever been asked to or been put in a situation where you were, like, nine doing that because you didn't really rock with the artist? We ain't got to say no names, but I'm just curious how you handle stuff like that. Yeah, like, if I'm cool with both sides, then I won't do a feature with either side. Okay. Like, two i I'm not do a feature with either side. You just stay out of it? Yeah, because it ain't got nothing to do with me. Like, if I, if I die by taking up for one of them, they probably not going to take care of my kids, so. That part, that part. You got to actually, a lot of people don't think about that. They just think about the for now, not thinking about a year from now. Yeah, you I got me. Kids and all kind of shit. My mama got to get taken care of, my brothers, sisters. So if I die taking up for somebody, uh, rap beef, right. like, like the jump in people rap beef, them folks, they're going to say RIP to you, but they ain't going to gonna support your family. That part. You know, it's crazy we're talking about this because literally today, Nipsey Hussle's killer got convicted first degree murder, and it's just a trip. I still can't believe he's gone. Yeah, so, that's crazy. That's crazy. It's like, when the last time he got checked on his kids and his family, that's all I'm saying. So, with you talking about planning for the future, 
I know you were talking about the next project already. You done dropped a gang of music since the album came out, which is already still going crazy. Like this last, what was it? Like a little mini EP, six bangers back to back. What was that? Was that Blackout? What, what would you call that? No, I just dropped. I just dropped some stuff. I, I, always, usually, I always drop four songs. This was my formula, like 2017, 2018. I drop an album and drop four songs. Mm -hmm. But you, um, when you got partners and stuff, you got to get all technical with it, which I don't like to get technical. Like, you don't want to drop no songs to take away from the album. But I believe in dropping loads of music. So right. I, my plan was um, drop an album and drop four songs for the next album or drop four songs anyway. But, right. you know, music in the music industry, they want to do it like just drop an album, let the album breathe. But you got it. People attention spans are short. They want to keep hearing new music, and keep I swear, them. Oh, yeah, like people, people would be like, go back to Black Circle Two, or go back to Grow God, or go back to Six Hours, or go back to Paranoia, or go back to this. Mm -hmm. What that means is my style always evolving and changing. I was gonna say that because when you dropped the video with Chinese Kitty for New York, I was like, okay, you're doing it for the ladies, switching it up just a little bit, but it was a nice little look for you as well. Yeah, my female fan base done jumped. No, I ain't going to lie, because, like, <laughs> I'm talking about, they definitely around. What do you think they did, though? Why do you think they got drawn in? Oh, well, you know, I've been getting in shade. I'm smart. <laughs> and got street sense at right. the same time. So, you know, women like women like you when you got some edge, because they don't want, like, just a weak nigga. And if right. you got a intelligence and you can boss them up, then that's e that's an even bigger bonus. And I happen to be in the top one percent of niggas who making money. So right. like you gotta look at all those factors. I ain't gonna act like I'm just the biggest player out here. I love how you just said that the top one percent of niggas getting money, like <laughs> niggas just don't say it like that. Niggas like, yeah. I'll be getting my money. Yeah, so I it's all those factors. Well, how do you beat them off you with a stick then? How you stay focused? Because I know you can get distracted real easy. Women, to me, and men can be a vice. You know what I mean? And I know you said you can't have too many vices. So how do you stay focused and don't get distracted by that? Um, I just got, you got to just have discipline. Like, um, when I was young, I used to read a lot. Reading brings discipline. Because you got to sit down and read a book and do nothing else fun. So mm -hmm. if you got that type of discipline, it start young. It start from ages, um... Five, five to 14. If you don't get disciplined in, then it's harder to get. You be discipline, disciplining your kids? Yeah, well, yeah, for sure, but they understand. Um, right. I could be there and be broke, or I could be gone and we good, and I could come see you when I see you, but my kids is good, you know. They mama, right. mama smart as hell. They mama homeschool them, mm. and she got them, so I got a responsible woman looking over them. Mm. Smart. Shows the right one to procreate with. I love that. So, as I asked you before, you were talking about previously that the Blackout was going to be the next project? Yeah, Blackout. I might drop some in between. You know, it'd be in the air. It's how I feel. I don't like to really set nothing in stone. I like to kind of be spontaneous with it. Okay, okay. So, let's switch gears a little bit and let's talk about Bitcoin because I've been on Bitcoin for at least the last 10 years back when it first peak before it first peaked and it was like a thousand dollars a coin so now i know you've been in the nft space in the bitcoin space what do you see the future of bitcoin going right now with the latest quote-unquote crypto crash that we're seeing i mean it's just it's the crypto crash is is a a, a regular event um mm -hmm. what goes in then they know once it hit all-time highs and start slowly going down most people who complain is people who kind of like knew who invested mm -hmm. in the so they invested when bitcoin was over fifty thousand so it's kind of like you got to study something you don't just put your money in there before you start studying it and what it is is once it hits an all-time high it's Do you think that Bitcoin is like the next place? Because they're calling it the new gold. 
it's the best they can pay for a fifty thousand dollar coin, or I think it's thirty thousand right now. Well, you can buy satoshis. Satoshis are basically um, pieces of Bitcoin. So when people when you see like crypto heads be like that's just my two satoshis you can buy one satoshi i forgot what the exact measurement was you could buy a dollar worth of bitcoin two dollars but it's worth the risk right you might as well put i put i always say put my, it's going to pass that it's going to be valuable. just put it in there let it sit in your wallet and take it offline yeah, don't even look at it for a few years. Mm -mm. Bear market right now, bull market coming back. It'll be back oh, soon. Yeah. Especially everything in the economy happening right now. I feel like that's a part of the reason why crypto went down. But um, I did want to add hey, his advance in Bitcoin, which was huge. But I feel like there's room to grow here with y'all. And so I'm just curious if you guys are planning anything and anything in the future. I know you already are planning another NFT drop. But have you thought about launching your own cryptocurrency? Yeah, I have. But, you know, it's a lot of responsibility because you, you plan with people money. So you kind of got to be, you know, you don't want to. It's just a lot of responsibility. Like, I don't, if I start one, it's going to be multi-millions. It's going to be millions of dollars for it then. So, right. Um, and I got my own million. So I feel like crypto right now, so crypto is right now. If you can make money, if you know what crypto is, crypto for the average person is not what it is to make quick money because they're playing well games right now. That's why I dropped the well games album, y'all. So right, going up and down like clockwork. You got stock market people in it, no regulation. So I don't want to be a person known. Like, my word is good, so I don't want my word to be thrown off because of some type of manipulation inside of my coin. So somebody can come in and put $500,000, keep the price up, and pull it out, shoot it down, make double day money. It's just crazy. Crypto is, crypto is just too interesting to start a coin and, and then do all that type of manipulation. And just having people putting their money in there with no real reason and no actual uh, usability now, for it. If, if this was all, um, if it was another lifetime, and so I would climb shit, then I would definitely start a, a coin and rub for it. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you have people out here trying to scam. Don't say that. So I know you said you wanted to drop another NFT this fall, but do you have a plan for that? Like, what's going to be, what's the NFT going to be for? I don't want to drop too many because you, you definitely got to have utility with your NFT. So one of the main utilities of mine is going to be um, you get free music that's exclusively for the NFT. You'll get VIP access on certain tours that I have around the country. So I, pay, I don't want to drop too many because I don't want to water my shit down. You know what I'm saying? Do like an exclusive membership, thousand only? Yeah. Oh. Stuff like that. That'd be fire. That'd be fire. So you've been doing a lot on social media, giving back to the fans. Like, that's one thing I do love about you. Not only are you dropping gems, trying to get people financially literate, trying to help people with their credit scores, but also, of course, just educating people on cryptocurrencies, different businesses that people can do. But when you take a moment and just give fans $500, like, what sparks that? What, how, do you wake up today and be like, I'm just going to drop a bag off to a fan? Oh, I just do it for my, you know, the more I give, the more I receive. So I kind of like, I don't know, it's like the universe downloaded that into my head, so I just follow it. I can't explain what I do it. Because a lot of stuff I do, I don't even, I don't really go viral on it. Um, I put some stuff online, I don't. I just right. do give away. Really, I'm just, I'm kind of molding my fan base to what I'm into so they can be into that same thing and maybe they can be successful as well. I'm pretty sure a lot of your fans probably rock with you because a lot of stuff you into, they into and they want to learn more about. You know what I mean? Sure. So, anything else in the future? Like, are you planning on doing any type of retail, any collabs with clothing? Because I can see that for your future. Yeah, I got a few clothing lines coming out. Um, we just working on the mock ups, finding vendors and stuff like that. You know, it's taking time. I ain't gonna lie, my day be so, my day is wake up, work out, 
record music, then it'd be time I'd be out, I'd be exhausted by the end of the day. So it's just kinda hard struggling everything. It's really like I just gotta focus on doing music right now. I try kinda wait. I go I feel that. I feel that. And you, you know one thing I did want to ask you, though? I know you said, I know you, you talked about it a lot, how you had to buy yourself out of your previous contract before you got with Empire. Did your hustle change when you made that move? I know you bet on yourself, but were you like, all right, what's the most money I ever invested in myself? We're going to have to go 20 times harder. And then on top of that, how did that, did that affect who you had around you at the time, too? No, I still got the same people around from then. But my hustle, so I hear people say something like this. They say, you, um, you'll never get better. The older you get, you'll never get better, right? So okay. the older I get, I better. Um, I'm smarter. I make more money. Mo but most artists peak out. They peak out around when they get their biggest song, and then they kind of start falling down. So me, I always took the motto of always getting better even with my health, with my body, with my knowledge, everything. So when I made that decision, that decision wasn't even hard at all. Um, and it wasn't hard to get the money. Um, mm -hmm. Companies coming and offering me like $500,000. We'll get $500,000 just fast back seven fifty. I did that two or three times. They'll get five, wow. seven fifty. Um, and then my music streams. Like I'm a, I'm a streaming artist. Most people don't know that, but I'm in the top ten of all rappers in the U.S. So, mm -hmm. I self is worth millions of dollars. Um, even though I'm an underground artist, I have great artists, but my strength is probably what theirs is. So, back then, I was a money. So, if I borrow that, it's only what I'm right. I was a show doing three shows a week, so I was making thirty thousand every weekend, guaranteed. So signing the check, we did it because my lawyer advised me to. Um, soon as I figured out my lawyer didn't have my best interest at hand, I called Birdman. Was like, I want to go independent. And let me tell you, cash money. I, I met the Birdman. Birdman is not a Um, he just told me he was like, never you see it. If that's what you want to do, I respect. It. So I, I like, well, it was a like, well, two is with. That's crazy. I don't know if it's me or if it's you cutting out, but I'm about to take out the earbuds real quick. So, it's interesting that you say that because, you know, Birdman, I think, catches a bad rap, but it's nice to hear that he actually looked out and just did what you wanted to. And you were smart enough to have that foresight because a lot of times you'll hear artists, I'm not even going to go there, but there's people in court now just fighting to get off the deals they've been on for 10 years and they've already fulfilled. So, I'm going to give credit for you to doing your homework and doing your research and understanding the mathematics behind this and how you actually get your money. You can actually do this on your own. Yeah, you know, people think it's cool to be dumb, but I actually had a little common sense. So the common sense was Birdman didn't upstream me to Republic Records yet, right? So right. when you artists like Birdman, Birdman signs you to another label. He's, he's, he has a deal with Republic. So guess what? Before he upstream me to Republic, let me call his phone and see if we can work it out before I go to the internet and start airing them out about this or that. You know, I'm, I'm my own lawyer now. Um, shit, I might get played on some shit, but I learn from my own mistakes. I'd rather me learn from my mistakes than a lawyer over here who could get paid off by right. Universal. I'm not saying Universal Music does this, but who could get paid off by a big major corporation and lying to me. So I'd rather find out myself and know myself. Most artists rely on an interpreter telling them what a contract says. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read that contract myself and figure it out. That's what I do for all my partners. 
Because it, it never fails. Every artist complains about their money. Every artist signs to a major label complains, except Drake, because Drake streams so much that he makes so much money. If you could cheat him, and he wouldn't even know. Right. And and it's that just hit me personally because that's how my dad got played. He wasn't in music, but he was in real estate. And you know, sometimes when you don't know your attorney getting paid by the city. It's a whole different game. You know. So most respect to you. For, uh, just stay in game, the game, and understanding where the money actually comes from. In yourself and reading, because I nah, most people ain't reading their contracts in 2022. So actually, I wanted to ask you: Are you gonna start bringing up artists underneath you that you maybe have came up with that you want to see that you feel like are up next? Like who's up next? I got some artists that I'm bringing up now, and then I got some that I'm involved with, but I don't really like to attach myself to them. I like them to be. <laughs> Just be able to do their own thing. It's kind of like a silent thing, like like a silent thing. You don't want to be. Uh, yeah. So, when will we find out then? I got two artists that's on my album. I got BC Juni and BC J Rock. Those are both on my album, but I also artists who I manage. But um, I rather people not know that I manage them. Really? How do you have time to manage people too? That feels like a lot. I put people on autopilot. I show you how to do... The music business is really easier than people think. Right. Um, the business is hard. Is You know when the business is hard? is when you can't really rap. When you can't rap, then you need everything else around you. You need the, the clothes. You need the tech. Good music. But <laughs> good music, guess what? Everybody comes to you. So I tell people, don't chase money, let money chase you. An NBA player lets money chase him. All through his, his younger years, he's playing basketball and he's getting good at it. So take Steph Curry. Steph Curry got a jump shot. They, every team is going to want him in the NBA. He don't got to chase the NBA. The NBA is chasing him at that point because he learned the skill. So like I said, a lot of people, you got so many niggas who rap, but most niggas can't rap. So they got to get jewelry and they got to spend 500000 because they don't have natural talent. Now, they say work does outbeat natural talent, but when you got natural talent and then you put the right team around you, it's a little easier. Go, so when oh, it's another thing. All my artists record themselves. They don't need an engineer. They know how to, they went and bought a studio. They record themselves. They know how to make cover art. They can just put their shit out online. They're not waiting for nobody to do nothing for them. They learn. Like, like if you rock with me, you got, huh? is that mandatory for you to work with you? Like you got to know how to do all your own stuff? For sure, because then that that's extra money being spent. Like it's twenty. You don't know how to record yourself when you're a rapper. <laughs> don't do them like this, bro. People, you know, they say YouTube University, but some people ain't figured that out yet. Yeah, it's just crazy because it's twenty twenty two. A studio setup is under two thousand dollars, and um, you can record yourself. You could damn near get a template from somebody and then it mix itself down there and you can just put that shit out online. Speaking of mixing, because I remember uh, you said that Dazi Mix and Master, this last project. How yep. Do you... Yep. You know Gazi from the Bay, right? Yeah, so, Gazi. Yep. <laughs> I remember when he used to be in the studio grinding, like before Empire, before all of that. But I was curious, how do you go about beat selection? Because you be selecting some crazy beats sometimes. Oh, I got to, the beat got to just be a beat I like. I'm not one of the niggas who be like, man, you, you a rapper, you can rap on every beat. Mm -hmm. um, I just, if it if it speaks to me, I'm going to use it. I'm a mood rapper. Like, if I'm in the mood to rap, I'll go rap. If I'm mm -hmm. not, I, like, the beat got to be hard. I got to have a hard beat. You know what's crazy about you saying that you're a mood rapper? Because I know you said previously that you kind of absorb people's energy around you. Uh -oh. so protect your energy and like... In 2022, that was my motto all year, just protect your energy. So you keep certain energies from around you and just don't engage? Yeah, but you know, like, the young hooligans all like to come to my shows and link up with me. And so it's kind of hard to protect my energy at this point. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but that's why you got to have, like, you know, your homies there to kind of deflect and keep people pushing. Oh, I mean, it's my homies. Uh, I mean, I feel that, but you know what I mean. Like, small doses. Oh, it's it's too far gone now. It's you know it's gonna, it's gonna be forty hooligans at the show just with me and then whoever else comes just to come watch the show. So you know you just gotta you just gotta be in a good good spirit at that point. You know what I'm saying? Like 
Like a lot of my shows might be in the trenches, you know what I'm saying? But I just be in there comfortable because I just know I know somebody in the, most of the people at the show that made a hundred thousand dollars in my music selling weed or scamming or you know what I'm saying? So it's all love. Like another type of rap and then I'm stiff, you know what I'm saying? Like I come in there chest out, I'm not a small nigga, like I'm six three, two, two thirty five, like Okay. Try me without a pistol in the club, and then outside the club, you know, we license and carry. So it's all good. I think I got my license on me. <laughs> you do? <laughs> Never know. Cop ain't told me we don't have concealed carries out here in California. But if you get caught with one after you had to use one for reasons of defense, it's only a misdemeanor. As long. Oh, as so just stay licensed up and make sure.